throughout its history, Russia has captured foreign lands, colonizing indigenous peoples, destroying their national identity, then using the same peoples to seize new territories and enslave other peoples. As we'll see today in 21st century, the methods that the Kremlin used almost 500 years ago just do not change. And it does not matter what the name of the state is, Moscow, the Russian Empire, the Soviet Union or the Russian Federation, the essence remains the same. Today, as on the past, other enslaved peoples, the Chuvashs, being under the burden of Moscow's occupation for more than 500 years, give their lives away for the imperial ambitions of the Kremlin, seem to be completely forgetting how, over the centuries, the Moscovites killed their ancestors the same way and took their lands. And after the occupation, the survivors were forced to submit and forget the atrocities of the Kremlin. National history was rewritten, cultural heritage destroyed, repressions took place. People started picketing against the war. Everyone's positions here is straightforward. No one supports the invasion. There were protests directly in the military units here. Three southern people were mobilized here, and a lot of them have already died. Majority of the mobilized in Chuvashia are people from the regions of the Republic. In history classes, we were told that Chuvashia voluntarily joined Russia, but this is a lie. Muscovy began to enslave the Chuvash people, making them serfs of the Tsar. Processes connected with decoakization, collectivization, malnutrition, death, cannibalism. Right now, direct action is the most powerful form of the protest. I want people to have a right of choice. I want people of Chuvashia to have a right to choose. If people want to secede from Russia, they should have that opportunity. Our goal is to gain independence. On February 24, 2022, Vladimir Putin conducted the beginning of a so-called special military operation. Despite the total propaganda that was trying to convince that the war was supported by every single soul, a lot of people turned out to be against this war in the Republic of Chuvashia. The opposition part of the population immediately stood up against the war and began to organize protests and rallies. The cases of civil disobedience did occur. Activist Stanislav Arsentiev was the first citizen of Chuvashia who went picketing on February 24th, the day when the special operation was conducted. The case of Yulia Kaburkina, an artist from Chibaksare, who stuck little men with anti-war messages on store prices. Tags. Those were paper men with such phrases as war means death and no to war. No one told us we had to go there, invade, defeat the Nazis. There was no such thing at all. In the evening, people started picketing. People had to honk if they were against the war. They honked and were immediately detained. The Chuvash symbol, Kileshu, appeared as a sign of protest. I will tell you about this performance. There was a letter Z at the Arbat Chibaksari, and suddenly a man came in broad daylight and taped it up. That is, he crossed it out. Kileshu means peace. There was a situation with a shopping mall in the center of Chibaksari that stopped working. We had announced a rally near the Dom Mart building. Even employees were not allowed to go out to smoke, to go to the shop to get some air. The barriers were placed right next to the doors. Speaking about the war, everyone's position here is straightforward. No one supports the invasion. With the beginning of the special operation, repression took a new level. The repressive apparatus gained more power. And then they introduced these laws about fakes, laws about discrediting the army, and of course it scared people, because 
If you go out picketing, you spend the next eight years in jail. After the announcement made by the President of the Russian Federation on the mobilization throughout the country, including the Republic of Chuvasha, people have been massively taken away to the military registration and enlistment offices in order to be sent to the criminal war in Ukraine. They were taken away from their homes, from educational institutions, right off the streets. The real number we can be sure of is over 3,000. That's enough for us to hate all the enablers. Majority of the mobilized in Chuvashia are people from the regions of the Republic. There was a flurry of messages in the angry Chuvashia telegram channel. People asked what to do and how to live further. There were protests directly in the military units here. When there was the first wave of mobilization, there was a riot in Chibaksari military units because people didn't want to go. The commanders came out to them and tried to negotiate with them. As a result, they organized a kind of rally of him. They came out of the military unit and shouted, Kamar Yao, which means, this is our village, our yard. Some of the people just didn't come back, didn't come back to the military unit. During the next wave of mobilization, they are going to drag 13,000 people from the Republic, while the population of it is a million of people. This is actually a big number for the Republic. We helped the mobilized to evade mobilization. People were taken out in various ways, not only by plane. So they just embarked and left, but also there were more exotic variants through the woods, for example. We worked as human rights activists, helped people not to go to the war, explained that they could refuse taking summons, explained how one can refuse to go to the war. 3,000 people were mobilized, and a lot of them have already died. We write obituaries for the dead. Due to the data posted by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, the Russian army has already lost 260,000 soldiers and officers. Mostly those are representatives of the indigenous peoples from the national republics that currently are part of the Russian Federation. They are fighting with the hands of indigenous people, with the hands of rural people. Indeed, there was an order not to mobilize people from large cities. We saw it on the example of Moscow. We see it on the example of Chibaksare. Putin doesn't care about those he needs to kill. He just kills those who can't defend themselves. The Chuvash-speaking population, ethnic Chuvash population, lives outside of big cities. They are those people who were hit with the wave of mobilization. This is just an existing fact. The Chuvash potential vanishes. Young, able-bodied people, those who know the Chuvash language, leave. More than 190 peoples live on the territory of the Russian Federation. Most of them are indigenous peoples enslaved and colonized by Moscow in different periods of their history. So how did the Chuvash turn out to be a part of Russia after all? Of course, joining the Moscovia Kingdom cannot be considered voluntary. What does it mean that Chuvashia voluntarily joined Russia? The year 1552 was marked by the defeat of the Khanate of Kazan by Ivan the Terrible's troops. Since Chuvashia borders Tatarstan, they passed through this territory. Accordingly, the troops of Ivan the Terrible built a number of fortresses, a number of outposts, in order to capture Kazan. As a result, the Khanate of Kazan was defeated by Ivan the Terrible, and in fact, the Chuvash people were also subordinated to him. We were literally told in history classes that Chuvashia voluntarily became part of Russia. It is not true, it is just a lie. Since the occupation by Ivan the Terrible, we had 30 years of uprisings that were brutally suppressed by Moscow. There was a decree issued that Russian landlords could take Chuvash lands and evict them at their own discretion. So, in general, a part of Chuvash lands went to new Russian Moscow landlords. This, in general, led to the fact that the population became predominantly rural and mainly representatives of Muscovites and assimilated people were settling in cities. Because of the anti-national policy, the Chuvash people regularly revolted and rebelled against the Muscovite colonizers. 
They were not okay with the occupation itself. Right now they are called collaborators, as in Ukraine. In the occupied territories they put their own people. Well, such appointees from Moscow. Moscow began to enslave the Chuvash, to make everyone serves of the Tsar. All of us had to go to the army for 20 years of service, to give up our resources and so on. In general, the population understandably fought and rebelled against this. Either for the constant support of such protests, or for the Razinsky and Pugachev's campaigns, the Chuvash nobility was practically cut down. In the times of the Russian Empire there was a genocidal practice, which was expressed in the fact that representatives of indigenous peoples, especially those who did not profess the Christian faith, were forbidden to settle in cities, to engage in metallurgy, blacksmithing and so on, those crafts related to metals, so they couldn't make any weapons. Another act of genocide of the Chuvash people committed by Muscovy was forced Christianization. This Christianization was absolutely violent. First of all, no one was asked, people were just baptized by force. There was exactly the baptism of fire and sword. The reason why now, for example, it is very rare to find indigenous Chuvash names among the Chuvash people is in the Christianization with which Russian names were assigned. For example, I am Chuvash by nationality, but my name is Dmitry Semyonov. It is very rare to meet someone with an indigenous name like Sakhmer, Naras P, Ilimbi, or something like that in his passport. Despite the Moscow occupation for more than 400 years, the Chuvash managed to preserve their national identity, and during the collapse of the Russian Empire, they revived their statehood. In 1917, the year of the collapse of the empire, the Chuvash also wanted to have their own state very much. The majority of Chuvash people supported the Bolshevik Red Revolution to a great extent, because the region was peasant and quite poor, so those ideas resonated with them. They supported the Reds, thinking they would thereby gain their greater sovereignty. They conducted a declaration of independence. As a result of the collapse, the Chuvash ASSR appeared. Communists then managed to convince various nations that they, the communists, would give those nations freedom from empire, but they built a new empire. One of the most terrible trials for the Chuvash people was the famine in the Volga region in years 1921-23. Processes connected with decolocization, collectivization, malnutrition, death, cannibalism took place in the territory of Chuvashia, as well as there was the Holodomor in the territory of Ukraine. During that period the Chuvash in the villages had to eat their dead children, so severe was the famine. All the peoples that lived in the Volga region at that time suffered, and then those territories where people had died out began to be massively populated from all over the Soviet Union, so they could mix people up. During the collapse of the Soviet Union, Chuvash's national consciousness awakened with the new vigor. In the post-Soviet era, Yeltsin told the peoples to take as much sovereignty as they could handle. In Chuvashe, a declaration of state sovereignty and, in fact, a declaration of independence was adopted on October 27, 1990. Everything connected to the culture and national languages was flourishing. We had newspapers printed in our own language, literature was in our own language, poetry published and so on. The declaration, this independence, was about Chuvashe being at that time a republic like the independent republics that were seceding the Soviet Union. Education was in Chuvash language, Russian was studied from the second grade as a foreign language, like English is taught from the second grade, so we had Russian in that way. The Chuvash language had finally become a state language, that is, before that this language did not have such a state. Is. There are such places in Chuvashe where you can come and people don't speak Russian at all. They speak only Chuvash. Still, there were some kind of elections under Yeltsin. There was something. 
When Putin came, all elections were cancelled. With the help of various loopholes, federal treaties and other tricks, Moscow destroyed it all and turned Chuvashia into just an occupation district. Chuvashia and all other national republics within Russia were actually deprived of autonomy and sovereignty. They implemented a policy of gradual Russification, and now, for example, we have come to the point that Chuvash is an optional language. The very base of the Soviet Union, where people were repressed for speaking Chuvash, in the Russian Empire, where the Chuvash were treated as foreigners who are not allowed to work, to do business, not allowed to get positions, and and such like. And therefore, if we believe that the empire should collapse, then it is not the Soviet empire, but the Russian empire. And accordingly, such national republics as Chuvashia and Tatarstan and others. Well, those who want to, of course. Now there is no point in protesting at anything in the way it used to be done, because rallies and ribbons can't change anything. Right now direct action is the most powerful form of protest as far as we deal with terrorists. The full-scale invasion of sovereign Ukraine by the Russian Federation on February 24, 2022 made the whole world shudder. Many countries began to rethink their own security strategies, joining in military alliances, revising their defense budgets, and also certain processes began to occur in the Russian Federation itself. Many opposition politicians, public figures, activists, representatives of various peoples began to think about the security and future of their peoples. Organizations such as the Free Nations League and the Free Nations of post russia Russia Forum, aimed at decolonization of Russia, appeared. As a politician, I want people to have a right of choice. I want people of Chuvashia to have a right to choose their future on their own. The main thing is for people to decide, and it is not so important that there are institutions. The main thing is that there are documents that we can rely on. The main thing is that there should be communities within the Republic that want freedom. In March 2023, online referendums on independence were held in some regions of the Russian Federation, including Chuvashia. Here in Chuvashia, we informed people about this referendum very well through the Angry Chuvashia project and local journalist projects, so we got some overview of opinions. I advocate as rigidly as possible that if people want to secede Russia, they should have such opportunities. There should be all the legislative mechanisms to do it legally. It is important for us that according to the results of this referendum, people generally support our independence. I believe this is an axiom that doesn't need to be proven, people should have a choice, freedom of choice. As well, we were the initiators of the National Revival Assembly, which aims to bring together all national movements that realize that freedom can only be obtained through physical means. Our significant feature is that we call for direct action, and even more we carry out these direct actions. In our assembly there is such an organization as Black Bridge. They are responsible for the organized action against terrorists in Rostov and Don, where the FSB the building just went up in flames. In addition, we have a well-functioning agent network in Chuvashia. That is, we have informants on everything possible. We know about everything that is going on. In the night from August 8th to 9th, we carried out a wonderful action in Vladivostok. The representatives of our assembly in Zoani Queen, this is the Far East, were the partisans who attacked a ship of the Russian Navy, which is based in the Far East. East. There was news about the attack, there was information about the explosion on the ship. Originally our partisans were going to set fire to one of the warships in the territory of the military unit. We are preparing an army of partisan drones throughout the Russian Federation for this purpose. In fact, representatives of other movements have joined us in this project for in order to do that the Belgorod People's Republic, the Voronezh Republic, the Don Republic and the Pomoria region. In the near future we are again planning a number of festive, so to say, events. They will take place not only in Vladivostok and, moreover, not only in Primorsky Krai. We have people who are waiting for their turn. Let's say they are mobilized into the Russian army, 
They are waiting to arrive at the front and immediately switch to our side. If the Russian security services are watching this, don't even try to stop it somehow. We will apply for Ukraine and other European countries to recognize our independence. Of course, each Kyria will support us in this matter anyway. They are the fastest in this matter, although they are already a partially recognized state. At least Ukraine recognizes Chechnya's independence, fortunately. Our goal is to gain independence.